Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out five random kitchen gadgets to see if they actually work. It's kind of an interesting bunch here. I've got two that were sent by manufacturers, two were sent me for consideration for my store, and one of them just randomly picked out on Amazon. So without further delay, let's get right to five random kitchen gadgets. This piece of round plastic looks like one of those CD covers back from the 90s, but it's actually the paper towel topper. It's a pretty simple device, but with a potentially useful function. Let's first take a look back at the unboxing and then test it out. Okay, this is the paper towel topper. It looks like it says it keeps your paper towels dry, clean, germ-free. Provides support when tearing, fits all paper towel stands. That's pretty much it. Oh, they're very simple, <laughs> very simple device. It doesn't mean it won't work. Let's uh, head to the kitchen and try it out. All right, so this is not gonna be a very extensive test. There's only so much you can really do with this, but let's try it out. I have my favorite paper towel holder, which I reviewed a while back. What's interesting is there's actually, I don't know if you can see or not, but I actually see some marks on there. It looks like someone had some mustard in their hand and got on my paper towels. That's exactly what this is supposed to prevent. So all we're supposed to do is place it over the paper towel holder like this. There, very simple, uh, very simple look. Suppose you can fit on any paper towel holder, and I only have one, but it seems like it works on that one pretty well. So it's supposed to serve two functions. One is to protect the paper towels from getting wet or getting anything on them, which I'll get my hands wet and see what happens. The other thing you're supposed to be able to do is press this down so it holds it in place so you can tear off a towel easier. This dispenser is actually really nice for, for one-handed paper towel dispensing, but let's pretend that it's not that good and try it that way. I'm gonna do the pressing down feature first. So pressing it down. Well, so normally if you just pull it, you're gonna get you're gonna get some of that. You don't want that. But let's press it down. Oh, what do you know? It worked. What do you know? Simplicity is a beautiful thing. Let me try another one. Without pressing down, it's gonna be kind of ugly. With pressing down, very easy. Let's try with some wet hands and see what happens. So, oh, I just did some dishes. I got wet hands. Let's see what we got here. Ah, paper towel is still dry. <laughs> that's the idea, that's the idea. And we got quite a bit of uh, water that did not get in my paper towels. Let me try the unpleasant alternative and see how that goes. Oh, I've got wet hands again. Oh, look at that. Uh, you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there are drippings all along the top of that. There are some OCD people out there that would absolutely dislike that experience. So that's where this would come in. Very easy to put on and, and it's very simple, but it seems to work. So if you're someone who really hates the idea of wet hands touching paper towels like that, this could be a product for you. If you've watched much of my channel, you know I am always using kitchen thermometers. I've probably gone through about six of them over the last six years. I've never really found one that I thought was good enough. A lot of times they're really slow. So what happened was recently I was reaching for one and I turned it on, the battery was dead. And I remember that Chef's Temp had sent me one. It was sitting on my stack. I pulled it out and I immediately liked it. What's funny is they sent me another one. I guess I didn't realize that they had sent me this one. So I, I actually have two of them now. So I don't really have a proper unboxing, but I did put it back in the box. So you can kind of see how it looks uh, in the packaging. So we have an outer box and then we have an, an inner box and it is right here. The range is pretty good. I think it can go from minus 20 or so to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. What I like about it is it's really sturdy in your hands. When you open it up, it comes on automatically. They say it can read within one degree Fahrenheit of an accurate temperature within one second. Another nice feature about this one is it can work right or left-handed. So say we're using it right-handed. If you use it left-handed, flip it over, and the display flips so you can use it right or left. Very handy. It's also magnetic and can stick to your fridge instead of having to put it in the drawer. The only thing I, forget, I found that I don't really like about it is the fact that if you want to switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius, you actually have to open up the back plate and it, it, the switch is in there. But I think most people, once they set it, they're not going to keep changing it back and forth. But that's really my only gripe about this one. It's been really good. It's really accurate. It's really fast. There is a hold button, though. That, that's the, only, the only button on here is for a holding. You can, you can hold the button right there. I wish that a long hold would have switched back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, compared to this tailor I've been using, you can see that the probe section is about the same length. But look at the difference in length in the body. Much longer. The tailor also automatically shuts off really fast. 
it's a bit annoying sometimes. This one is also waterproof to IP67 standard, so you can't drop it in boiling water, but it will stay waterproof if you drop it in water. So I'm gonna head over to the stove right now and compare the two of these with going from boiling to ice water and see how it works. All right, on the left, I've got boiling water. On the right, I've got a bowl of ice water. Let's see how these two compare. They're both around 74 degrees. Here we go. All right, chef's temp, 206. Taylor's still going. Still going, Taylor gets there. Moving over to ice water. Chef's temp down to 34. Taylor on its way down, on its way down. And it turned off. And it's getting close. It does stick to the fridge pretty easily, pretty nicely. For easy access, don't have to take any drawer space. Let's make sure this thermometer is actually waterproof before we just take their word for it. Just gonna hold it underwater for a little bit. It kind of floats actually. It seems like it's kind of floating. I guess there are instances where you might be grilling near a body of water. It's nice to know that it floats. We are dripping. Hey. This is no ordinary whisk. This is the twist whisk. And the way this works is that you go from a regular whisk to a flat utensil with one twist. Not only that, but also stores flat in your drawer, safe space. It's also covered in silicone so it will not scratch your nonstick pans. So I'm going to try doing some whisking in both configurations and see how it works. I feel like some scrambled eggs this morning. Let's do uh, let's do some of those. Well, whisking wise, it just seems like a regular whisk. It's kind of quiet because the metal whisk will bang around the side of the, of the bowl. And this is hitting the side of the bowl, but it's quiet because it's covered in silicone. That's kind of nice. All right, so let me uh, move over to the stove and then switch this to the other configuration and see how that does. Let's twist this into the flat configuration. What I like about this is that you can use it on the bottom of this nonstick pan without worrying about scratching it because of the silicone covering. A metal whisk, obviously you wouldn't use in here, but this one you can. If you're whisking in your pan, you could also, not that I'm whisking right now, but you could whisk directly in there if you wanted. I also like the fact that on this particular pan, I can go around the edges quite nicely too. I'm gonna finish up these eggs, but my test with this, I think, has actually worked quite well. It goes from whisk to flat utensil seamlessly, and I think for that, it's pretty useful. One more very quick test with a twist whisk. Not only am I gonna to try to whisk with it, I'm gonna to try to use it as a spatula as well. We'll see if that works. Got some pancake mix here that needs to be stirred up. Switch to whisk mode. Let's whisk. It's perfectly acceptable as a whisk. All right, that was easy enough. Let's move to the stove and see how it does. Let's just try a simple pancake, see if we can flip it. Let me see if I can check underneath here. Well, this seems a little bit flimsy for checking underneath it. With a regular spatula, you can, you can easily do that. All right, as far as a spatula goes, if it's a really good nonstick pan, maybe, but this creates a bit of an issue here. I don't know, I don't think it really, I guess you could use it as a spatula in a pinch, but I would say overall, probably not, not so easy. Okay, regular spatula. I don't think it was really advertised as replacing a spatula or even being used as one, but if you're wondering, I would say it really doesn't. Now, space-wise, it's certainly an improvement over traditional whisks. Now the twist whisk looks a lot like the Chef Wizard, all they function differently. The twist whisk just turns from flat to full size whisk, while the Chef Wizard just opens up like tongs and you can flip food with it. So not much of an overlap even though they look the same. This is the next item that was sent to me as consideration from my store and this is a lemon and tomato slicer holder. Typically you see metal versions of these, but a lot of people saying that the metal ones are hard on their knives. This is plastic, maybe it'll do better, we shall see. The way you do it is you hold your tomato or lemon in there and all you do is just cut through the lines and it should cut it evenly, we shall see. Now one thing I was gonna also find out is that, does it, is it just for round objects? Because it seems like it's just be for round items. Like let me say I have a small tomato here and in this tomato, that looks beautiful, look at that, perfect. Holds it nicely in place, very nice. But what happens when we get a different shaped tomato like this? This is a Roma tomato, I don't know about that. That's, I'm not too impressed by this. 
What about if we have a big tomato? Look, this, that's not gonna work. This barely, barely even holds it. How about a small round lemon? See how that goes. See how that looks nice. Now here's a little bit more oblong lemon and it's maybe still work. Moral of the story, it seems like it, it might work for round objects and that's about it. But let's test it out. Let's see what we got here. All right, I'm just gonna go, I guess start on the end and just, and just cut through, I guess. Hmm. It, it seems like when you start cutting, it kind of curves it and then you can't get all the way down to the bottom. Hmm. I'm just gonna keep going. Let's see what we end up with. We'll look at the final result when I'm done cutting. From my perspective, lining them up like that is actually not that easy. And it also doesn't feel like it's going all the way through. It feels like it's just getting part of the way down. All right, <laughs> did not have a good feeling about this whatsoever. Let's see what the final product is and the final reveal. The entire bottom of the tomato is still intact. So we have, like, we have like a, what is this? That's not gonna work. I guess you can just hold it and go through it, but then what's the point at that point? There's a, there's a small area at the bottom where it just doesn't, it, the knife can't get to, so you still have to use your knife. All right, but I, but I did it, but I did it. I'm not gonna complain too much, maybe just a little bit. All right, so we've got, some, here's our slices. Now the two ends are quite large. They're not even the same, the same shape here, but. I guess the slices are okay. What do you think? I don't know. Let's try a lemon and see how that goes. I just, I just picked it up and noticed that the pin fell out of here. This fell out. Oh no, it's, just, it's, it's falling apart. Oh man. I guess the question of whether I wanted to consider this for my store as if it wasn't already answered in the first test has been answered again. All right, I got it back together. Take two, take two. We got a round lemon here let's see what we got well based on the tomato i already have a feeling this is going to go badly but you never know let's find out well that one seemed to go all the way through that's interesting that did not feel like it went all the way through nor did that one let's see the final reveal here oh well some some went through and some didn't i've got this kind of middle section all stuck together but a few of them went all the way through. I don't know, is, is that really better than just a mandolin slicer? Nice idea, but I don't think it's ready for prime time yet. Maybe if you could get away for it to cut all the way to the bottom and the pin wouldn't keep falling out, it might work. But as it is, I'm gonna say no. Next up was a product that was sent to me for consideration from my store. This is a plastic wrap dispenser. I always have problems with those plastic wrap rolls, so maybe this is a solution to the problem. Let's take a look back at the unboxing and see how that went. It looks like we got some suction cups in the bottom here, and I believe these are magnets, so you can stick it to the side of a fridge. This, I believe, is a cutter, so you can just cut it across that way. So this must this pulls out right here and then you have they already include plastic wrap with it. That's kind of nice Didn't expect it to actually have something in there. I thought it was gonna be empty So I guess you just uh, leave it like that and then this is the uh, this is the cutter I believe let's uh, let's head to the kitchen and try this out properly I've got some cookies here from twisted sugar. This is just a couple of samples here Let's say I've, I just want to save these put some wrap on there. Let's see what happens. Now I've, I've pushed this down on the counter I should be able to just pull this across the plate. Should be able to pull it across the plate. Come on, suction cups. Now what we do is cut it. And then we can wrap it. Test number one was pretty good, but let's take a closer look and see what we got underneath the hood here. All right, so there were no instructions. I had to figure this out on my own. To open it up, you just you kind of just pry these two sections apart, reveal the roll inside. It's, here's how it's set up. You have, an, you have a kind of a, a tube here that looks almost like a big straw. Then you've got a couple of end caps that go into the roll. I was gonna try aluminum foil in here, but when I was checking this out last night to see if the aluminum foil would fit, it didn't. It was about an eighth of an inch too thick. If they could make this an eighth of an inch wider, I could fit my aluminum foil in there. Otherwise, I, I can't. I have several brands of plastic wrap, but let's see how they all work. This is the one that we just had in there. That one worked pretty well. This one is pretty full. So here's how you have to load it up. You put the end cap on there. 
I feed the straw through straw. I feed the plastic tube through there and just kind of hold it in place like that and then feed it through the other end like this. And then you have to kind of hold it in place otherwise that tube falls out. So then with your other hand you have to open this up. Ah. Look, the, the, the tube came out. Okay, it's it's not that easy. I right, start over again here. I got to open this up. I'm fumbling around here. All right. Okay. So the, the plastic wrap did fit in there. I kind of have to pull a little bit out here to get it started. Now the problem with this is the plastic wrap roll is so thick that it won't, it doesn't want to spin and it doesn't want to close. Ugh, it's not going to close. This is not working so well. I, I really need this roll to be smaller. I, I, you can't put a really thick roll in there. It's just, it, it won't even close. It is not, I wanna, I'm gonna break it if I keep squeezing it. And it won't even spin because it's still stuck in there. So that roll is a no go. So we have one that works and one that doesn't. Roll number three. The problem with this one is it's, it's just a little bit too wide. It will, I can't, it's pushed over as far as it can go and I cannot push it in there anymore. And I've got that much of a, just a tiny gap, but enough to prevent me from actually putting it all the way in. Two haven't worked, one has. I've got two rolls of wax paper. I can already tell this one's gonna be way too thick. There's no way this is fitting in there. It's thicker than the one I just put in there. But I do have one that's kind of mostly used up, so I can try to put that one in there. Let's see, is it gonna, is it gonna fit? It fit, it fit, all right. Once the roll goes in there and fits properly, it seems to work really well, as long as it stays on the counter. So look at this, wax paper. Yeah, beautiful. Now it's kind of hit or miss at this point. It seems like if the roll fits, it works well. If it doesn't fit, you're out of luck. And getting it in there is kind of a task too. They advertise this being used on the side of a fridge. I, the problem is it seems like it can't work on the front of a fridge because the front of the fridge is curved and this is flat. But let's try it on the side of the fridge like they advertise and see how that works. All right, so on the side of the fridge here, you should be able to take advantage of the suction cups and the magnets. Let's see. It feels, you know, it feels pretty sturdy. Let's, let's see how sturdy it really is though. Let's see if I can pull this here. I'm kind of pulling gently. I guess if you have a plate like this cheese right here, you can kind of wrap it. I think I hit it with one hand. No, that's not working. That did, that did not. Let's take. Uh, now it slipped. Take the, that's a disaster. We got it's chaos in here. Let me let me start over again. All right, I'm just going to measure out the length this time. <laughs> it's not going so well. Come on, now it's now it feels like it's stuck. Let's try again. I'm going very gently. I'm pulling very gently. You kind of need two hands for this, and then now I can wrap it up. When it works, it works well. Now watch what happens if someone comes in and just yanks on it. Oh, not so good. Another issue is that you really can't put it on a curved fridge because only one side or the other is gonna stick. You could potentially do it sideways, but you really can't do it the way it was designed like this. Sideways, yes. Horizontally, not so much. Let's recap all the five products here, shall we? As far as the two that were sent to me for consideration for my store, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pass on both of those. This one I'm not as worried about because it really didn't work that well and it keeps falling apart. I just think that there's a lot of better options out there than this. As far as the plastic wrap dispenser goes, I'm really kind of bummed about this because I like the idea in principle. It really seems to work well. If it were just a little bit larger to accommodate bigger rolls, I think it would actually be quite good. As is, I think it needs some work. The paper towel topper is a very simple device, but what it does do, it does well. Thermometer by Chef's Temp. This is actually my go-to thermometer now. I do recommend this one. It's a bit expensive, but I think most people that get that will like it. Now, as far as the twist whisk goes, I think that it works exactly as is advertised to work. I'm not sure I would throw away a perfectly good whisk in place of this one, but if you're looking for a new whisk, your current one takes too much space or you're not happy with it, this is definitely one you should consider. Well, that's all I've got. If you've tried any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.